lots of people, all these investment planners, all those quote unquote influencers who come and tell how you must save money, how you must invest. I would want to tell people that you earn money so that you can spend money. This is a very, very secular exam. It, it does not make distinction among anybody. And touch wood thus far, if everything else is bad, our exam system is, our examination process is very robust. The day you step out of being a CEO, nobody cares about you because bulk of those things come out of position. Here, I don't think it comes out of position. Even nice guys win. Uh, you don't have to be a tough guy. You don't have to be an aggressive guy externally. What requires is internal aggression. Hey guys, this is Ashish Sachdev and you're watching True Talks with Ashish. Today we have with us our guest Patabhi Ram sir from Chennai. And a quick introduction about sir is that he is a chartered accountant by profession. He has trained and mentored more than 76,000 CA students. He is a tech freak person and he has lately started talking on AI and technology. Uh, we'll try to find some things about his life how he landed up in teaching and stuff like that. I have had the honor to meet sir a year back when I was in Chennai and it was a great, great, great experience to listen to him in person. I was, uh, I, I, I always say that I was honored at that point. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashish. Thanks for having me in your show. So I want to start with asking you uh, that moment of your life, that that defining moment in your early life, when you decided that you will study accountancy, commerce, and you'll become a chartered accountant. Well, that's uh, reasonably easy to explain. During my growing up years, I think it must be largely true even now, the best and brightest boys the best and brightest girls went either into engineering or to science, or oh, sorry, or to medicine. Uh, when I told uh, my father that I decide I want to get into accounting, he was fine with that. For me, the choice was very simple. None of those science subjects, physics, chemistry, biology, were things with which I was comfortable. I was very happy doing mathematics, very happy studying English, also quite happy doing history. So when uh, when I told my father's friend, who was a chartered accountant, and I grew up in a very small community in the eastern part of India, he literally blew his top. He said, hey, the, hey, the best guys don't go to this, this course. This course is for the second rung or third rung kind of students. I said, no, you are there. I, I don't consider you a second, third run, and I don't think I can even imagine doing science. So that's about it. In, in, in other words, it was not a matter of choice. You have choice if you have studied accounting in class 10, class 11, class 12. Here you had only studied science. So it was rather elimination. So you eliminated engineering and medicine. What was left there was CA. Now that goes for everyone who chooses this subject, right? No, I think today there are there are better options. I I guess so. Today people are far more well informed, and today it also does not matter if you make a wrong choice. Uh, you today have people having done odd courses who are still doing splendidly well in life. I think uh, just to give you a perspective. At the time when I studied, there were only five engineering colleges, five IITs. So if you missed out on, on an IIT, you had to go to an NIT. And if I remember right, mm -hmm. across India, there were only eight NITs. Uh, mm -hmm. And very, very few medical schools. So if you missed on them, you had to go and study science. Today, I don't think that is the thing. Today, there are so many, so many colleges. So the question of somebody not getting a seat doesn't there, isn't there. You told that you also loved reading about history and culture and stuff. Never thought of taking up humanities and becoming an IS officer that time? No, humanities had a very 
what should I say? Uh, at least in my mind, it has the it had the color that no, uh, this is not the this is not something that I should be doing because I could not see a career ahead of me. IAS obviously could have been a choice, but some of IAS never appealed to me, and uh, I studied. Uh, I did my class ten under what was then called I don't know what's called now. It was called the Indian Certificate of Secondary Education or ICSE. And from there to get into humanities, though people did get into humanities, I didn't see a career there. Whereas I, I could see a career in accounting. As we know that you have trained so many students and you have told about how you started on with this journey. What were the challenges, biggest challenges that you faced during your CA preparation? And today, when you look at students, uh, what is the difference between the challenges that you faced as a CA aspirant? And today, when students come to you, what are their challenges? What is the uh, difference that you can uh, uh, make from the two situations that you started and today a person starts? No, I, I think there are very, very stark differences. First difference, if we go in and in some order, uh, television was not there. We had television, but there were only two channels. There was a Doordarshan one, and there was a very unimaginatively named Doordarshan two. So television was very, very limited. Social media was just not there. Social media came long, long later. The syllabus wasn't as top heavy as it is now. Personally, I feel I have felt and I've told everybody who matters that this is not how we need to prepare chartered accountants. Uh, syllabus is absolutely top heavy. You expect people to know n number of accounting standards, n number of audit standards. You want an intermediate student to know the whole of taxation, the whole of company law all standards in auditing, I, th I don't think it, may it makes sense. Personally, I think it makes no sense because you never prepare a student that way. You prepare a student for a subject, you make him learn to learn, and then he do does the rest. Uh, to cut a long story short, I don't think we had specific audit standards when I studied. Uh, I, if I remember right, we had only 15 accounting standards. So that way, the if you look back, the quantum was very, very less and the distractions were significantly less. I'm sure the boys of today will say much the same thing 20 years later. Uh, so these were two main things. The third important thing was that I don't think there were organized classes of the kind that there is today. I would personally think, not because I taught, but I would personally think that today's generation is very lucky because there are lots of people who teach. And many of them teach with... Uh, a great amount of dedication and a great amount of passion. Um, when, when we studied, the guys who used to go to classes were normally considered people who were weak in their subject. Mm. And uh, we had a college education that was absolutely remarkable. And uh, to the place where I went, no, do, from there to do intermediate was just a cakewalk. So I think these are the principal differences that you have. But one thing has remained same. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I can say this, but I'll say this. Then and even today, the exams look like it's a lottery. Uh, except this exam where lots and lots and lots of people have qualified, which I don't know whether that's a good lottery. But anyway, the exams have been very, very unpredictable. Then they are unpredictable even today. I'm 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 uh, taking away from my uh, the sequence that I wanted to follow. I'm asking you some impromptu question. How much luck or destiny you think that goes inside a person becoming a chartered accountant, and what amount of hard work? What what is your take on destiny and hard work? As you have told, that one thing remains the same, and I I just thought of it that I should ask this question at the very right moment. So what is that destiny factor in becoming a chartered accountant and the hard work? How do you put, put it? Now, if I gave the impression that no CA is about luck, no, I didn't mean that. I, uh, I have then conveyed it very wrongly. All that I was trying to say is that even the best and brightest guys, 
do not get through the exam. And uh, there are people who pass in their second attempt. When I took my exams, if somebody said I'll finish in my second go, it was not thought of as being very good. Today, for example, we process it's okay if you have finished your exam in the fourth exam, it's all right, we'll take you. That means there is a very completely different perception going around. Now, coming back to your question, no, nowhere in life success will precede work except in the English dictionary. So anywhere, any field that you take, you want to become an IAS officer, you want to become a doctor, you want to play cricket as well as Virat Kohli plays, or you want to play tennis the way Alcaraz plays, there is a lot of work. There is a lot of preparation that goes on. There is a lot of effort that goes on. With reference to the successful people, what we see is only the award nights, the big claps, the big paychecks. But if you look back, all of these guys have put in extraordinary amount of work. Uh, be it an SRK, be it uh, Sachin Tendulkar, be it uh, whoever. So I am not going to downplay the importance of hard work. Hard work is there. I think there is the importance of intelligence. If you are a little lower on intelligence, you need you can make up with hard work. Luck like anywhere has a certain part. Uh, luck like anywhere has a certain part like in any game. Uh, I have not done any empirical evidence. But I think in life, at least 10% is luck, whether you are a student or whether you are in employment, whether you are in practice. If you look at employment, for example, the pyramid goes like this. The base is small. So the higher and higher you want to go, the lesser and lesser are the openings. So not all guys go on to become a CEO. Somebody gets left out and somebody can call it bad luck. Somebody can say, it's all right if I don't become a CEO. So I, I, I don't want to give this impression that this exam is about luck. I don't want to misguide people that way. This exam is about effort. This exam is a very, very, of what I have seen so far, this is a very, very secular exam. It, it does not make distinction among anybody. And touch wood thus far, if everything else is bad, our exam system is our examination process is very robust. That's 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 true. Sir, you are known for simplifying complex financial concepts. So what all this what are the strategies that you use to make things easily accessible to you know students so that they can understand things in a simpler and a more easier manner? All right, I'll take a couple of minutes to explain this. First up, that challenge no longer exists because I no longer teach. Post-COVID, during COVID, I thought I had had a long run, that it was time that I should pursue other things. Uh, I'll tell you a few things, tell all of you a few things. If some of you misunderstand that, I don't mind, but I want to be, I don't want to be politically right. When I began teaching, I started teaching two subjects, cost accounting and much later, a little later, financial management. I had always wondered as to why people used to come for cost accounting classes. I had always wondered because personally to me, the concepts looked very straightforward. And for example, when I did my cost and management accounting, there was nothing that I studied in terms of the concepts, be it transfer pricing, be it relevant costing, be it responsibility accounting, be it whatever. Uh, let me put this out. You can interpret it any, the, any which way you want. When I used to read some of these ideas in uh, responsibility accounting, etc., I somehow felt these were either obvious or these were something that I already knew. And that was the reason why I never picked up any of the popular Indian textbooks. I used to read uh, some of the other books more like a story. I hardly would sit and work out cost accounting problems. I still remember my cousin used to also do his uh, cost accounting. By then I had finished mine. He was married. I would go to his house. I would ask his wife to get me tea. I would drink tea, lie, lie either in the sofa or in the bed looking at some questions and scribbling some answers. She would then tell him, what is this guy doing? You have 
simply studying this is how it does so okay to cut a long story short i should tell you that i found these subjects somehow simple i understood them at a fairly good level when i was in college also there were times when what the professor said this is one of the first steps uh, we could never make out the professor was outstanding but sometimes what he said we could never make out two of us uh, who used to sit together uh, decided that we'll crack uh, this uh, reconciliation of cost and financial records i have never been a great fan of accounting meaning it's not a subject that i cherish so we sat together and then created some kind of a table which worked somebody asked how did you find out find out we told them i don't know how we found out we found out today for example in chennai i think anybody and everybody uses that uh, it's a table where you can almost mechanically work out an answer that's one thing okay. if you come to financial management if you look at uh, what is today called afm if you look at derivatives if you look at any of the other subjects these were subjects that we never learned when we were in ca uh, these were subjects we learned the hard way Uh, by the time for example derivatives came into our syllabus i was already well known as a teacher and uh, i would feel uncomfortable if i go and teach derivatives and people did not understand or they felt that i did not know the subject i was very conscious about that so i would sit and work out in advance and there were many things that i never understood so i would find ways and means of understanding that i would pick up some indian book i would pick up some foreign book not not the ones that are recommended textbooks because with due respect to all the authors many of them simply pick up and place what is there mm-hmm. pick up and place what is there means you have a doubt as to what that sentence or paragraph or that idea means you go and pick up a book the book talks about only about the sentence the paragraph the idea just like what happens in many of the accounting standards books you are looking for an example which you don't find so i would hunt and uh, i would google i would find and then somewhere the bell will strike i will make my own i would make my own modifications and uh, uh, then teach so in other words when i when i used to teach i knew fully well what was happening and if i did not know an answer i would uh, tell a guy i don't know the answer i'll tell you tomorrow i still distinctly remember many years ago when i was we were talking about teaching arbitrage Uh, which is mm-hmm. there in capital structure now uh, you need to introduce debt into the capital structure in order to make mm-hmm. both the companies equally risky one guy put up his mm-hmm. hand and said how how does introducing debt make it riskier the easy answer to that was to tell him that no there are there are interest, there is interest interest uh, uh, when interest uh, gets placed no as the earnings change the profits change and that is there for risk uh luckily for me the gong went that means the time of the class was over so i said i will let you know tomorrow i personally i was not convinced with this traditional argument so i went and met a went one of one of these uh, highly respected gentlemen in corporate india who himself was a teacher i sat with him i asked him he he gave me a reasonably good answer but my good luck i stumbled somewhere where there was an example small example and then i put out some numbers and i found that uh, this was stunning uh, this was possibly the best way that you can also understand why debt in, introduction of debt creates risk in mm-hmm. the capital structure why removal of debt reduces in capital structure so i went ahead and explained that in the next class i told people it might take you half an hour to understand this but it is well worth your time and mm-hmm. uh, initially people had a problem and those who had a problem i said you go look at it today later at night the numbers are there you study that and uh, it fell in place so like that there were many things that happened like that some of them were conscious effort some of them looked very obvious so that was how it went in other words no i was i sh- i can say today i was extremely lucky i taught these two mm-hmm. subjects that i thought i knew reasonably well i know some outstanding teachers who had who wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning go through the material for half an hour 45 minutes come to the class at 6:15 uh, carry a book with them 
this is not to disrespect them this is to tell what kind of effort they put i must have been the only teacher who would get up at 5:45 and land bang in the class or 5:30 land bang in the class at 6:15 with nothing in my hand i was very very lucky and at at best when there were harder topics i would have some papers with me which was visible to anybody who could see where i used to have made note of a few points in terms of examples Mm-hmm. So you have also started writing, and you have written a uh, number of books. Uh, what inspired you to write your first book, and how you think that your writing has evolved? If somebody wants to start writing, uh, I was very keen right in school about writing. So whenever there was the school magazine, I used to write. I wrote in the college. Then I started writing for a national newspaper. and okay. luckily for me in chennai i got to be recognized not as a ca i don't think i even got to be recognized among the teaching community as a, sorry among the practicing community as a teacher i was first looked upon as a guy who wrote for the paper i used to write every okay. week on on i had a column on mutual funds and luckily for me the writing stood out stood out means the newspaper i can tell you the name of the paper the hindu uh, writes in a style which is traditional which is conventional and when my writing started appearing there it was easy to read and so it it was very very distinct it was very un hindu like writing people were even surprised that those writings got carried out so i was that way lucky then sometime in sometime in 96 i got an oppor- i i wrote an article about the ikfi the institute of chartered financial analysts of india i wrote an article about its founder he had come to chennai to speak i was pretty impressed by what he spoke so i wrote for a magazine and uh, he subsequently read that and he said why don't you write the first 10 years of the institute and he gave me what had been written in america about the american institute to be honest that is where it, that is where what should i say traditional kind of writing began a book kind of writing began after that it became easy it was not hard after that it became easy it was only the question of what time and effort you would put in uh, to any fresh guy i would today there are also lots of tools there's a software called grammarly last 10 years it cleans up your english it cleans up mm-hmm. your grammar. to people who are wanting to write my view is that if they are wanting to write non technical they should write from here they should write from their heart not from their head if you write mm. from the heart if you write what you have experienced and even the best of writers most of their writings are autobiographical they will never tell you that it takes someone like chetan bhagat india's most widely followed writer many of the things i am i am 90% sure are what he has gone through in life so if you write from your experience even if the characters are different people that works well uh you need to and if you want to be really a writer i think you need to write very frequently i once met mr jeffrey archer he had come to chennai so okay i asked him what do you do he said every day i write from 6:30 in the morning to 8:30 and then some other time to some other time he said uh so you have to make it a habit Uh, you don't have to be a professional writer to do that you can write even half an hour you can even write 500 words and as you write it becomes it evolves and you must also be ready to take criticism not everybody will write what like what you write i have a client of mine the managing director of a company who has on my face said i completely dislike the way you write but i want to read that because i like it i do. it's a very very difficult uh, expression and the man comes from the indian institute of management uh, what he is basically trying to say is that the ideas are good it's well drafted well written but the writing style doesn't suit my background so what i am trying to say is that you have to be receptive to what people say you don't you should not take anything not just in writing even anywhere you should not take anything and everything personally so you should think that they are actually being genuine i think you do that and you also need to do a lot of reading if you have done a lot of reading earlier it is good reading a lot of reading 
if you've gone through gone to a good school or good college, it helps. More important, if you, if you have done a lot of reading, it will help. As they always say that the people who lead are the people who read. Sir, as you have been talking about automation, AI, technology a lot these days, what do you think its impact, how is it is going to impact the accounting profession in days to come and the work of chartered accountants specifically? Okay. In all these uh, workshops that I've done across the last nine months, I've done essentially on chat GPT. Mm -hmm. I have told that you know, across the last four years, I've been talking across the length and breadth of India on, the, on what is called the future of work. And there, in the future of work seminars, I used to tell that any job that is rule driven, any job that is structured, will get automated and they'll get automated very quickly. I used, I therefore used to tell, don't think that your job will not get automated, any job will get automated. I also told people that any job that is creative, like you paint, like you draw, like you write, mm -hmm. like to a large extent, like you teach, uh, all these are jobs that will not get automated. Okay. At the same time, I said, all of you be cautious because any job will get automated. Today, I'm hopelessly wrong. Even the creative jobs, creative work has now got automated. Dali can do some wonderful drawings and paintings. Chat GPT can write the way of writing that is remarkable. Of course, if you if you are reading a lot of Chat GPT writing, after some time you will you can smell that this is Chat GPT by its sheer verbosity. But the point that I'm trying to say is that that has also got automated. Unbelievable things have got automated. So in my view, accounting, auditing. Auditing is also increasingly getting automated, AI driven. From automation, they're all getting AI driven. AI driven would mean that it, it learns by itself as it even as it makes errors. So we are here in for some more difficult times. Uh, personally, I think we are in for more difficult times. Or it also depends, I could say we are in for better times. It'll take away a lot of jobs, but also mm -hmm. new jobs will come up. The only difference is to, is that earlier earlier waves of innovation, we knew also new jobs will come. We knew what were going to be the new jobs. Today we don't know what are going to be the new jobs. We're all expecting that new jobs will come. Just to close this point out, ten years ago there was no job called a Uber driver, no job called mm. an Ola driver, or no job called uh, that Zomato delivery boy. Today, there are very good guys who are working in companies, who work in Honda. They are engineers, supervisory engineers, who in the morning, five to seven, drive the Ola car, the Uber car, not because they don't have a job, but because they are now saying, hey, look, this gives me extra income and I enjoy driving. So like that, we will, we will uh, figure out some jobs in the future. What has been your most significant professional accomplishments? If you want to narrate something. No, personally, I, I, I've never thought uh, that there have been landmark events in my life because maybe either I don't look at it that way or maybe I'm not being snobbish, but uh, I don't really say, let me have landmarks, let me achieve a turnover of this, let me do that, etc. What I can, however, say is that, no, there are many places, many occasions where you no know, people have recognized my face. Uh, they have recognized. Uh, they come back. They come and say, you know, odd places. I, I was once in Dubai. I was going to Coke's office, and in the Coke's office, in the lift, I met a CA who had studied in Chennai. In aircrafts, oh. I meet uh, across the place. I meet. I'll tell a story. This is not to be stopped, it's just to put in perspective how teaching can be very, very satisfying if you have done it the right way and if you have done it for a long period of time. Uh, there was the window seat where a gentleman was sitting. The next seat was empty. I was in the ale seat. Somebody knocked at that gentleman. He was a film actor. 
they wanted to confirm whether he it was he he said yeah so he said that guy said i'll take a photo so he took a photo with the film star there are two other people who then saw this film guy they two three people took photographs little while later somebody from the first row walked up to me he was apparently a student at some particular point in time he's doing pretty well then he said can i take a photo i'm so and so can i take a photograph i said no problem ah. take. so he took and after he went this guy asked me the film actor he asked me why are they taking photographs with you are you in the film or something like that i said they are taking photographs with me for the exact same reason that they are taking photographs with you so what i'm trying to what i'm trying to tell is that you get you get seen everywhere uh, i just gave you two examples there are many things where in the most odd of places i've run into a student so i think those are moments that make you feel very very happy it is it is not something that we would have achieved even if we had been the ceo of a company the day you step out of being a ceo nobody cares about you because bulk of those things come out of position here i don't think it comes out of position so if, if there are people later who will see this and if there are people who are teaching i would tell them that they should do it for an extended period of time they should do it with dedication and honor and the rewards are going to be very significant Mm, that's great motivation sir so one line of advice that you would give to a young person who thinks of becoming a chartered accountant in 2024 and later maybe I, the generation is very different here yeah. to the yeah, the generation that is now coming out as you know is called generation z their attitude and approach to work is very different from my generation they are very 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 different uh, that said And, and this is a generation which is in a hurry. Uh, it's it's in a it's in a hurry. It's a it's my nephew's generation, for example. If I can see my nephew knees and imagine it's like that, they are in a hurry. They are always on their mobile. Uh, I'm not saying that is bad, uh, but my view is that people should pause. Maybe they don't have to pause now when they are 24. They should pause when they are 34, 35. because there is a lot of things that can be explored in life i would tell a fresh ca that he has got at least 50 years of career because the longevity in our country and in the world is going to go up he is going to work until 75 there no two opinion about that uh, they are going to be fit and healthy they'll work up to 75 so there are multiple options that they should try at different different points in time you should give up something when you are at the peak or near about the peak uh, and you should explore something completely different uh, that's one second thing is that they should really believe that life is a marathon it's not a sprint it's not a 100 meter dash that no it, it, it tomorrow you have to buy a car day after tomorrow you have to have, buy a house it doesn't it doesn't matter and doesn't work like that also you can buy a car when you are 40 you can have a house when you are 60 you can do whatever whenever so we must recognize that the third important thing i don't know whether i'm being philosophical people will dismiss that like that i don't think you should really judge with hey there is a batchmate of mine he is doing so wonderfully well uh, or there's another batchmate of mine who is you know, rising he is a rising star of some other corporation i have been left behind i think very honestly i think and i'm not saying that just like that you have to compete with yourself last year i did x this year am i doing x plus other people success should only act as a motivation if you start feeling jealous if you start saying oh he has done i have not been able to do i don't at some point in time you must learn that different people are wired to be successful in different ways that's great so what has been your biggest inspiration both professionally and personally oh that that is a little difficult to answer the one person who we really admired whom no we all felt no when he achieved we all felt extremely proud that we were indians you were, maybe the subsequent generation will not understand that because at that particular point in time india really really did not have great heroes and the guy was sachin tendulkar so 
for a man to be a one man army from the year he came to 2003 when the natwest trophy took place for mm-hmm. 15 long years to be india's one man army where you knew that if he performed india will win you knew that if he did not perform india will lose and then to have continued to play in, with successive generations and i think in the later part of his career he must have played along with people who were born after he made his debut and mm-hmm. uh, whatever people might say about him now to have played that game with that kind of sincerity dedication with that kind of honor and uh, never questioning an umpiring decision i think for the first time people like me learned that even nice guys win uh, you don't have to be a tough guy you don't have to be an aggressive guy externally uh, what requires is internal aggression so i think uh, sachin really stood out then there was a man who is now no longer there a man called mr nj ssv ssv was the mm-hmm. founder of the institute of chartered financial analysts of india he was an all india first rank in his ca inter in his ca final in his icw inter in his icw final it's a record that stands till date and when i qualified uh, as a ca i gave up 10 mm-hmm. job offers and they were really really the best companies at that time offers from hindustan lever offers from idbi offers from ongc offers from indian oil i had eight offers from some of india's top companies i gave up all that to go and work with him because i thought and i still think i thought he was a wonderful guy to work with uh, he is a today today for example uh, if i think that something can't be done in my mind mentally i would ask what what would this man have done uh, if there is someone who was simple and whose ambition was on a huge scale and the ambition was on a huge scale in the right place and at the right time it was he uh, very unfortunately he passed away in 2011 uh, but i think uh, he was to me along with tendulkar possibly the most inspiring two most inspiring people that's brilliant to know sir uh, sir what are some of your personal interests or hobbies that you pursue outside your professional work and teaching and writing and whatever what all you do see technically speaking everything that i have done was actually a hobby people okay. my clients used to ask what is it that you go in the morning and teach uh, i would tell them morning 6 o'clock you guys go and play golf or you guys go to the gym to become fit you know in almost much the same way at that particular point in time i go and teach uh, what i am trying to say is that it was only intended to be a hobby i think till the last some of some of the people who taught along with me looked at it only as but today people will say no they are, he is talking through his head no we were very very clear that this was only hobby or this was only fun it was never our principal uh, source for anything other than the sheer uh, enjoyment it brought about that is why i think there are the people say that if you continuously and steadfastly do what you what you like many things will start flowing along with it teaching was therefore technically a hobby writing without a shadow was a hobby and uh, writing i don't know how to put this across writing to me has been therapeutic what i mean to say is that no if you feel out in the blues i can sit and write and like the painters who when they paint no they feel very excited i am pretty i pretty love when i write and uh, i used to tell the editor of a magazine she once asked me i think i wrote a story on mr guru murthy who is today the rbi director that time he was pretty popular as a journalist so she asked mm-hmm. me how much time does it how much time does this take to write i told her uh, it takes about i knew that the answer that i would give was may not be good so i told her it takes about 5 6 hours to me it took about 2 and 1/2 hours i told her it takes 5 6 hours she literally stood up from her chair she said are you serious i said yeah beyond that there is nothing that i can do it with my script 
she says that professional writers in her organization for those kind of things take six days to do. So, okay. <laughs> six days. so it, both of these came very naturally to me. So, therefore, that way I was very lucky. I was doing things that I actually liked doing. Uh, so, that way, if you look at you know, the hobby became uh, the way of work. Uh, I play squash uh, reasonably okay. fine. I'm talking about what I do today, now, not, mm -hmm. not in the past. Uh, I have started playing pickleball, and I think uh, okay. we will maybe six months' time, I should be pretty good with it. So these are the two things that I now do. What is that uh, one song that you would play if you are alone in the car and there are oh, rains, beautiful you weather outside? A, if you give me a call, there will be a music that would come in or ringtone or whatever you call okay. Uh, it's it's song I would play in the car. I've listed. I've actually ten, ten plus ten. Which is that song? Which is that song? I've always called you on WhatsApp. <laughs> no, you call on landline. You will know uh, that those songs are from the movie Murder. The, the some of those songs are from the movie Gangster. And uh, I have twenty songs with me. Ten in one playlist, another ten in another playlist. They are very soothing. They are extremely good. Long years yeah. back, somebody gave me 100 instrumental songs. They are movie songs. They are also extremely mm -hmm. good. These are what I listen to. They are either oh, Hindi, okay. Hindi or Tamil. Yes, yes. I can't okay. listen to English music. I can't even watch English movies. Okay. You don't watch English movies? I've never watched an English movie. I Maybe because in my early childhood, the kind of movies that were screened, were not to my taste. Even subsequently, now, even now, some somehow I'm not able to relate to what they do there. I also not able to understand what they speak there. Uh, mm -hmm. So, when you watch a movie, according to me, you should not take effort. Whereas, I think the English movies take effort. It, it could just be a mind block. I don't know. It could just be a mind block. Uh, but till date, I have not... Okay. Now moving on to the concluding part of this long, long, long talk that we have had. What are your thoughts on the future of chartered accountancy, accountancy profession in India and across the globe? No, there are many people who predict this will happen in the future, that will happen in the future, and they've all had egg in their face, including me. I said no creative work will never get automated. Within four years, it has got virtually automated. Uh, I think the way that we have done audits in the 90s, the 2000s, and maybe even in the 2010s will change. Uh, there will be a lot of AI work that will happen. There will be a lot. There is also a belief among some people, and to some, to a large sense, I subscribe to that. That statutory audit in its current form could possibly go away. Uh, in its current form, could possibly go away. Uh, like, for instance, if you look at the mutual fund industry, nobody mm -hmm. looks at their annual report. Nobody even bothers what its annual reports are because every day they report their NAV. And uh, that NAV and the growth in that NAV decides. So there is a view that people, organizations will constantly update in whatever place it wants. And the regulators will pull out data as they deem fit and do and look at it. This is very difficult to explain. What I'm basically trying to say is that this idea of an year end or, or to keep it a little simple, this idea that at the end of the year, there'll be a statutory auditor who will step in and do, I think that is going to increasingly get dwindled. Maybe it will take another 20, 30 years for it to possibly disappear. But I think it may not be there beyond the listed companies or beyond uh, companies that borrow money. That's one thing that will happen. My view is that this forensic audit uh, will be more sought after. Listed companies in turn, once in five years, will have a forensic audit where the forensic auditor walks in thinking that these guys are crooks 
as opposed to statutory mm-hmm. auditors who walk in thinking everything is hunky dory so there will be a lot of forensic audits that will happen mm-hmm. and uh, my other view is that there will be a lot of stories that will be written about entrepreneurs who hit it big companies who do extremely well uh, india will get down to documenting more and more of success stories and failures in a way that they have not documented before these are the things that i think could happen okay so last question and then we'll wrap it up what is that one advice i think you have already talked about it but i want to ask it in a more generalized manner that you would like to give to the gen z today about how they have to look at their life at uh, uh, like like an overall picture for the next 20 30 years probably no well, if, if there is a gen z guy who listens to what i am going to say he will say this guy is a boomer he doesn't understand okay that's what they are likely to say uh because that's a very different generation uh, that generation does many things that i possibly wanted my generation to do what i said then i will repeat now i don't want this generation to think that life is a sprint life or career is a sprint life or career is a marathon you have to last if you want to want to be remembered sachin tendulkar is today remembered because he played for 25 years i'm sure there are more talented people than him who played for 2 years 3 years and then they disappeared like a meteor Uh, the best example that comes to the mind the off putted example is that of vinod kamli and i'm sure there are many people like that in the world so the guys who are going to be remembered are people who do consistently well across a period of time not those who come in flashes of brilliance every field you take roger federer you take tennis federer is widely remembered will be remembered djokovic will be remembered nobody is going to forget look at a man like amitabh bachchan you know Mm-hmm. or a guy like srk amitabh is a better example though i am not a great fan of him that he has been in the, in the industry for 50 years he has been extremely adaptable when he realized that his you no know, running around the tree roles are not going to work he moved on he was a man who has been adaptable and that's the reason why he is what he is today so mm-hmm. to if you want to be remembered if you want to leave a legacy you will have to imagine that you will have to consistently and steadfastly work for a elongated period of years you will have to do that with both dignity and grace and you will have to mm-hmm. do that without being in a hurry uh winning and losing you know are are parts of the game somebody once told me that you guys should try this you guys have been successful i turned around and smiled at a friend of mine he also smiled at me and then the other guy said you no know, the guy who put out that statement said why are you smiling i told told the guy that we have done that there there have been no other set of people who have tried as many things as we have tried and failed okay you know only the success part of the face and which is just a couple exactly. of things and we must have tried at least 10 15 other things and two of them have only worked so all that i would like to tell people is that oh you work it might be your dream project and it could bomb just like indian too now people are saying it's bombed i think the man shankar has dedicated 5 years of his time and i i know because i did a story i did an interview with him 5 years ago i know how mm-hmm. passionate and dedicated he has been about it and that's not going to kill him uh, that's not uh, mm-hmm. he will like your comeback so like that in life there are many things that you will fall down uh, if you think oh this is the end of the world and then go and hang yourself from a ceiling fan it's the most foolish thing to do and today's generation i know does a lot of traveling but i would ideally like people to travel look at places there are some lovely places in india and in the world that you should visit you know life is not just about earning money there are lots of people all these investment planners all those quote unquote influencers who come and tell how you must save money how you must invest i would want to tell people that you earn money so that you can spend money you invest is uh-huh. one part you need to spend money you need to invest in experience some of some of the places are really outstanding 
and some of the things that you want to do you must do unmindful of what somebody else says if you think no i want to act in a movie you should find ways and means of acting in a movie that is all that i think i would tell that's great that was so fulfilling to listen from you all these things i hope that uh, people who watch this get some perspective out of it about uh, and some good things they can implement in their lives as you said that one should travel i welcome you sir to my place you will be my guest and uh, uh, i am so thankful and honored to have you sir and i must tell everyone who's there that uh, sir is also i don't know whether you made that presentation or not but the presentation that you gave in chennai when i was there to listen to you uh, was brilliant and uh, that only we have been in touch from that time and sir has been really nice and humble to just get in touch with me thank you so much once again sir thank you and those who have watched it till now i would request you to please subscribe to the channel and like it so that we'll bring yes, in more such intuitive interviews and people along with us and discuss more things thanks for watching have an awesome day enjoy thank you very much